Hello, high school football fans, and welcome to week 10. It's Western Buckeye League football. It's the Wapak, Wapakoneta Redskins at the Salina Bulldogs. And I'm Dave Bowen. I'll be doing play-by-play. -play. And it is my pleasure to have Josiah Stober as our color commentator tonight. The Wapakoneta Redskins, they come in at 9-0. 8-0 in the WBL. They are the champions. They have won it all right, all out uh, at this point in time. And Salina comes in at 6-3, and 5-3, three, and three, tied for fourth in, or tied for third in a four-way tie right now. A lot of things are going to change after tonight. So we have the Wapakoneta Redskins, Josiah. As we said, they are the champions of the WBL. What are some keys as they go into week 10 tonight in preparation, not only for this game, but the playoffs? Yeah, just as they've done all year long, got to continue that balanced offense. You know, they look at a team that puts the ball in the air, 220 yards a game, 180 yards on the ground. So a team that has to continue to use that balance um, throughout the year. And then finally, you know, win on defensively, they got to win the first and second downs, force this Salina team to throw the ball. Salina only comes in throwing 100 yards of passing a game. So, you know, want to make sure that they force those long third downs. You're right, the Wapakoneta Redskins, a staunch defense, number one in the WBL in both defense and offensive average. And the quarterback, Caleb Moyer, you're going to want to watch him, fans. He was only 14 of 16 last week for 193 yards and has a completion rate of 80%. For Salina, it's Brennan Bader, his ball club, uh, six and – Three, as we said, looking to fight for a high seed and get into the playoffs. Currently seeded number 10 in Division Three, Region 12. What are some keys for Salina to spoil the undefeated season for Walpaw? Yeah, first and foremost, they got to win the line of scrimmage, especially on the offensive side. This Walpaw defensive line is not big, but they're athletic and fast. So if they can control the line of scrimmage, get that running game going early, we'll see a lot of success for this Bulldogs team. And then finally, you know, they have to stay on the field. You know, as you said, this Walpaw defense is so good for them as they need to sustain some drives, not allow that potent offense to get on the field for the Walpaw Redskins. Those are your keys, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to welcome our presenting sponsors for tonight's game. They are the Side Rail, the Side Rail in Wapakoneta, featuring signature burgers, burgers, appetizers, large, large portions, and specialty drinks, IC signs, and Wapakoneta Ford, and our premier sponsor, B&B Auto Repair. We'll be back for the opening kickoff. It's Wapak and Salina on WOSN. Welcome back to the home of the Bulldogs, Salina High School, for tonight's WBL clash between the aforementioned Salina Bulldogs and the Wapakoneta Redskins. I'm Dave Bowen, and doing color tonight is Josiah Stober. We'd like to thank our premier sponsor tonight. It is B&B Auto Repair. Rely on Van and his team of expert technicians to, prov to provide excellent service. Call 419 738 8090 for your auto repair needs. Our presenting sponsors, Wapakoneta Ford. Wapakoneta Ford, view our new and pre-owned inventory at wapakonetaford.net or visit us at 613 North Dixie Highway in Wapakoneta. I see signs, I see signs in Wapakoneta. Local, fast and friendly. Check us out at icsigns.net and the side rail. The side rail in Wapakoneta featuring signature burgers, appetizers, large portions and specialty drinks. Open seven days a week on Ugly Street and online at the side rail restaurant.com. Wapakoneta comes in as a leader in the WBL at 36.3 points per game and only giving up 12.6. Salina, fourth in the WBL, scoring 27.7 points per game and giving up 19.2, third in that category. Again, Josiah, a game tonight where Salina and Wapak, they were co-champs last year. Wapak won this game 30-3, though, to create that co-championship. Salina out of the race, obviously, for a league championship, but boy, what an opportunity to play spoiler. Yeah, absolutely. You know, a team that would be happy, you know, to put that one in the loss column against this coming arrival here, 
you know, back and forth the last couple of years of who, you know, claims that WBL championship. So, you know, they're coming in. They got a lot to play for, especially tournament coming up here, the playoffs for each team, you know, this tonight could determine, you know, home games could determine, you know, not having to travel as far. <laughs> There's a lot on the line for both these teams. You're right. Wapak, it looks like they're going to be home either way. With a win, they're in the 2-5 to five range. With a loss, 2-7 to seven range. Salina oh, okay. with a win in the 6-10 to 10 range. With a loss, 10 and out. Kicking off for Salina, number 22, Carson Smalley. That's going to be fielded by Wapak Canetta. And coming around the right side and then up the middle is number 20, Ryan Richardson and Wapakoneta. Here we go, first and 10 right around their own 30-yard line. One roll return. So Wapakoneta with this work. offense, total oh, offense per, per a game, 405 <laughs> yards at <laughs> second in the league, 181 <laughs> rushing. 223 passing, fifth and third respectively in the league. And as we said in the pregame, Caleb Moyer just outstanding back there. 80% completion rate. You'll take that from a kid at the free throw line with no defense on him <laughs> in the game of basketball, Josiah. Yeah, you don't see that very often a quarterback, especially this time of the year as he hands it off on the first play and looks like they got a good four, maybe five yards. That's Jarrett Mullen coming around the left side. And he, oh, as you said, is going, going to pick up game. right around second five five. yards. It'll be second and five at the 35 yard line. The Salina defense again, uh, anchored by those linebackers, Corbin Lehman, Ian Mullins, and John Lutz. John Lutz, excuse me. Moyer, empty backfield. Two receivers on both sides. Mullen goes in motion. And here comes Moyer to Mullen. He's got a hole. He's going to find it through. He breaks the tackle. He's down the right side. The 35 and goes out around the Salina 33-yard line. Just a simple swing pass to Mullen, who was in motion right there, Josiah, and Wapak in business. Yeah, we saw how quickly Moyer got the, got the ball out of his hands. Quickly out, great blocks there by the wide receivers there to spring him for a huge gain to start this offense for Wapak, as you said, on the 32 of Salina. It's a 34-yard gain. It'll be first and 10. Wapak and Atta coming out, trying to set tone right away over the upset-minded Bulldogs. They try to bring or Salina offsides. Moyer thought he got that defensive line to come across. Andre Longsworth beside Moyer. He gets the ball. He's going to go off the right side. And right there's the Salina defense. A nice tackle by number 56 for Salina. That's Ian Mullins. And Longsworth stopped at the line of scrimmage, second and 10. Yeah, Ian Mullins there right in the hole, able to meet him right at the line of scrimmage and knock him back. So, as you said, no gain there on first down along second and 10. Just a beautiful facility here at Salina. I know it's tradition rich. It's an older facility, but man, what a great place to play football. Moyer hands it off to Mullins, goes around the left side. He finds daylight, and he's going to get close to a first down before he is tackled by Wesley Graber. And that is good enough for a Wapak first down. Gets it right at the chains, goes down to the 22. That's a 10-yard gain. Yeah, Wapak here on this first drive, doing a good job of getting to the outside, trying to use those athletes that they have. And so far, Mullen's doing a great job there, breaking that first tackle, getting a first down. And that is a Lee's famous recipe first down. Moyer, empty backfield, Mullins in motion, gets it on the jet sweep, goes off that left side, breaks the tackle. He's going to go to the five, to the goal line, touchdown, Wapak Canada. A 22-yard scamper for Jarrett Mullins, and it is 6-0 Wapak. Our touchdown sponsor is Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride means best quality meets best value for your dollar and best service you can count on. What a run there by Jarrett Mullins. 
able to go on that left side, found the gap, and then had to beat that last defender. Made a great cut and put it in. Number 99 puts that one through the uprights. That's Ethan Isert. Ethan Isert, the number one kicker in the WBL. That makes him 46 of 47 for PATs. Our extra point field goal sponsor is Frost Roofing. Frost Roofing, family owned and operated for over 96 years. Join the Frost family. They are an equal opportunity employer. Call 419-739-R00F, Frost Roofing. So, or Wapak comes out and sets tone on this first drive right away, Josiah. Well, you anticipate this is a team that likes to air the ball out. Only one pass there on that first possession. You can tell this offensive line wants to set the tone early, creating some good holes, some good blocking, not only from that line, though, but the receiver's doing a great job blocking. And we saw that number zero, Jarrett Mullen, got a couple opportunities, not only on the quick pass, but also some runs there to put the ball in a great start for this Redskins offense. It was a five-play drive covering, um, uh, finished by a 22-yard run by Mullins, covering 65 yards, and it occurred in two minutes and 13 seconds for the Wapakoneta Redskins. Our Red Zone sponsor is Binkley Real Estate. Binkley Real Estate has an effective sales approach, effective marketing campaigns, and extensive network that will get you results that move you. We weren't quite in the red zone because we scored from 22 yards out, but Jared Mullins, he traveled through the red zone and through the Salina defense for that touchdown. Iser will kick off for Wapakoneta. And that's going to be fielded by number 11, John Lutz. And he comes around the right side. I believe that was number three he took away from okay, Lutz. Okay, thank you. That's number three is Carson Weitzel. Catches the ball over his shoulder and gets great field position for the Bulldogs to start this first offensive possession. They'll be right at their own 39-yard line. So let's see what Salina does here on offense. Their quarterback... Bobby Morris, he is a veteran back there as well, very balanced with his throwing and running. Both quarterbacks can do it with their feet and with their arm. And he's going to hand off right away to his go-to man, John Lutz. And he's going to pick up a couple yards as that Wapak defense scrambles over there to take him down. Give him two on the carry, pick up a two. That was number 52, Brody Presar, doing a good job there of reading that, filling in that hole, and got him early and only a two-yard gain. One-on-one -on -one down here at the bottom for Morris. He is going to look to run, goes to his left, breaks through. He's got, he's got daylight. He may go all the way, Josiah, at the 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Salina Bulldogs! And that's another Pantry Pride touchdown. 59 what? yards, Josiah. Wow, what a start here for this offense. Quarterback decides to take it and run. Found some lanes on the outside. A good block by his wide receiver down the field, and he was off, and nobody could catch him. The second best kicker in the WBL, Carson Smalley. He toes it, and it goes through the uprights. And we've got fireworks here in the first quarter with 8.43 remaining. We're all tied up at seven. That's a frost roofing extra point. Your family owned and operating uh, for over 96 years, frost roofing. They are an equal opportunity employer. Call 419-739 R O O F. At this rate, we are, I don't even, I can't do the math of what, what pace we're on for. <laughs> lots of points. points are lots be and scored. lots. That touchdown was in 50 seconds by Bobby Morris. It was a 59 yard drive, and Salina answers rather quickly. Yeah, we've had seven plays on the offense so far and have 14 <laughs> points. So yeah. a little bit of excitement here in week 10. You know, you can't tell me this game doesn't mean something to these Salina Bulldogs fans. It's 
They're getting a little crazy over there. Yeah, for a defense that's only giving up 12.6 points per game, uh, Salina is on a pace to blow that out of the water as far as Wapak is concerned. And But the offense is total offense for Wapak, 405 yards per game. That was second in the WBL this year. And for Salina, 315 yards per game, six in the league. Well, here we go again with another kickoff. Carson Smalley, short approach, and he's going to pop that one up. It's fielded by number 20 for Wapak. He comes around the right side, and he is taken down. That is Ryan Richardson, and Wapak's going to start on their own 35-yard line with 838 remaining in our first quarter. Also, Carson White to win on the tackle, first down. Redskins on the 35-yard line. As we said, both quarterbacks can do it with their feet. Bobby Morris, he averages 72 yards per game. Well, he's got 59 under his belt already. Caleb Moyer, he um, is rushing for 70 yards per game. So diversity, they both can do it with their arms and with their legs right now. Moyer behind center with Mullins beside him. He's going to fake the handoff, comes to his right and makes the completion. Nice catch there by Grant Stauffer, but on the defense is Katie Wirtz to meet Caden Wirtz to meet him right away. But they do pick up four on the game. And we see Grant Stauffer has the cast on his right arm. So, you know, still out there, still competing, makes the good catch there. But as you said, even better defense there right away to make contact as he was catching the ball. Now we have a second and seven. Caleb Moyer in the shotgun on the jet sweep. And that's sniffed out. Oh, that, they don't get him down. He's still up. He's going to bring it back around this side. But Salina's there with the gang tackle. Great penetration by Salina. Yeah, Salina defense sniffed that out right away. Had a free rush to, to the Walpock runner there. Looked like he, looked like he was almost down but stayed up, but you saw the gang tackling there at the end. They were flew to the ball, and now it's a long third down for this Redskins offense. Third and 12, Caden Page taken down for a four yard loss. Moyer, shotgun. Got Mullins to his right, doesn't want to go there. He's gonna keep it, and he's gonna swing around his lineman, but Salina on the pursuit. Nicely done, good tackle there by Corbin Lehman. And that's going to bring up fourth down. A four-yard gain pushes the ball back inside the original 10-yard marker. But it's going to be fourth and eight. Wapak on their own 37-yard line. Ethan Isert prepared to punt this one away. Ethan Isert to punt. Deep for Salina. Caden Wirtz. A little bit off the left side. Oh, it's, it does hit the Salina player. He didn't know it, but his teammate, Wirtz, comes up and covers it. Wentz comes up and covers it, excuse me. Does a nice job there, Josiah. Yeah, just an unlucky, unlucky thing for that uh, Bulldog. As he was trying to get off the field, coaches were yelling at him, and it bounced and hit him right away, but... As you said, Wentz was, Wirtz was right there on the spot, dove on the ball, and opportunity now as for some excitement for this Bulldogs offense. Excitement is the right word. It's been fast and furious, and you're right. Salina tried to get off the field there, and Wentz, Johnny on the spot, realized his teammate was going to get hit by the ball, and he gets up there and covers it. No turnover. Bobby Morris in the shotgun. Lutz beside him. He's going to get the carry. Comes up the middle, straight up the middle. Looks like he picks up a healthy five yards. It's going to be second Charles down the on the 45-yard line. Well, it's important for this Bulldogs team to establish that run. You know, a team that that heavy run on the year, but you know this D line for Walpaw's not the biggest, but had a lot of speed. So we'll see if the size can affect this defense, keep them on their heels. Arrow, arrow. 
It's the pitch. Here comes Lutz around the left side. Mullins and Lutz, two running backs, and they meet on the field right here. But that's enough for a first down for Lutz. And right at midfield now, Salina looking now to put a little bit of a drive together and test this Wapak defense. Our touchdown, or excuse me, our scoreboard sponsors, Wabash Mutual Telephone. Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Bobby Morris with John Lutz beside him. He's gonna go off the left side. This is what he scored the touchdown on in the first drive. No touchdown here, Josiah, but he does pick up three yards. And Salina must have figured something as they continue to attack that left side, going behind that big offensive line. As you said, the same run that he scored on last possession. Walpock doing a good job there, rallying to the ball. Second and eight. Yeah, making a two yard gain. Trips to the top. Morris goes out to Lutz in the flat, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds by Mullins again, but not before he picks up a good seven yards on the play. Maybe, let's call it five, I guess. That's going to put it up to the 43-yard line. So it was a gain of five. It'll be interesting here. you got to be thinking um, two downs here, two plays to get the first, even though you're just on the other side of 50, you're the underdog. Let it all hang out if you're Salina. Yeah, I think both the coaches are thinking that right now is can we get a positive gain here? As he's rolling out, Bobby Morris trying to find somebody and lofts it up and incomplete, and I'll bring up fourth and three. Looking for Carson Weitzel right there. Great job by Bobby Morris right there. He put it only where Weitzel could get it. I actually thought maybe he was just going to throw it away. But he put it in a position where it was Weitzel or nobody, and Weitzel unable to come down with it. So, again, uh, living to play another down somewhat, but Weitzel was in the vicinity. Salida is going to go for it. Yeah, and I think this is a good choice by the coaches early. But, but there does look like there's a little confusion between Bobby Morris and his receiver, but Bobby Morris gets it in. Looks like we have a countdown, about yeah. two seconds left. And they're going to have to use a timeout. Our timeout sponsor is Metzger Financial Services. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. There's a timeout on the field. We'll take one as well. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Salina takes that time out as they were trying to make a decision on whether to go for it or not, and then the, the play clock ran down, but now they're in fourth and four. Morris behind center, he gets the snap, and he looks for Mullins out the left side, he finds him, and he's gonna get a first down and more. John Lutz with the catch, goes around the left side. And that's gonna be a first down for Salina on the Wapak 30-yard line. Yeah, we've seen some success early, getting that ball quickly out to Lutz. Finding him early has gained quite a bit of yards there. As we talked about earlier, this Salina team needs to have these long drives, and so far they're doing a great job, and that's a power run by number nine, yeah. Parker Berkey. That's a nice job going right up the middle. And he's tackled by the Wapak defense. Ross Huntingford on the tackle. Not before he picks up six yards. So 
on the 24-yard line. Salina, as you said, a methodical drive. They started this drive with 6.17 to go on the play clock. We're down to 3.20 here in the opening stanza. Bobby Morris with Berkey beside him on his left hip. Run pass option, Morris keeps it, he's scrambling now. Playing backyard football, he's gonna keep it and get shoved out of bounds near the line of scrimmage. We're gonna say, where are they gonna mark it, Josiah? Yeah, I believe he may have lost a yard yeah. on that run. Good job there by Braylon Walter to push him out of bounds. The end there stayed home and kept a little bit of contain there and forced the, forced him out of bounds. So Morris again in the shotgun. John Lutz on his right hip. Two down territory for the Bulldogs. And Morris is gonna keep it. He eyes and spies. There's nothing there. Great stop by the interior Wapak defense, no led by number 52, Press Brody Prez Prezar. That's a nice job. Now it is fourth and six for the Bulldogs. Yeah, we saw that Wapak defense send a blitz there. Number eight, Bryson Pack shot the gap there. Carson Smalley, he's going to attempt a, looks like a 43-yard field goal. As we said, the two top kickers in the WBL. He toes it, gets up there. Is it long enough? I believe so. It is. Unofficially a 43-yard field goal for Carson Smalley. You don't see that on the high school football field every day, Josiah. No, Carson Smalley, just enough. Looked like they caught the ball right on the other side of the post. As you said, that's our Frost Roofing field goal. Frost Roofing, family owned and operated for over 96 years. So join the Frost family. They are an equal opportunity employer. Call 419-739-ROOF. 10 to 7 with 2.20 to go in our opening quarter. We want to thank our presenting sponsor, Wapakoneta Ford. Wapakoneta Ford, view our new and pre-owned inventory at wapakonetaford.net or visit us at 613 North Dixie Highway in Wapakoneta. Also, I see signs. I see signs of Wapakoneta. Local, fast, and friendly. Check us out at icsigns.net. Again, we weren't in the red zone, so we can't. Talk about Binkley Real Estate, but we will anyway. The Red Zone, Binkley Real Estate has an effective sales approach, effective marketing campaigns, and extensive network that will get you results that move you. Here's our kickoff, and fielding it is Ryan Walter, and he goes around the left side, and he's stumbling and bumbling, and he's gonna get up to the 40-yard line. 2-11 remaining in our first quarter, and Wapak will have the ball on their own 40. Good field position. Let's see if they can answer here. Well, if you're the Bulldogs coaching staff, this is the start that you wanted. Coming out, you know, scoring on that first possession, you know, that second possession, taking some good amount of time off of this clock, you know, and coming away with some points off of that long field goal. So we'll see if the Bulldogs can now get a stop defensively. Caleb Moyer, empty backfield, Mullen in motion. He's gonna get the handoff, cuts it up because of the penetration around the right side. Ross Hunting, or excuse me, Parker Birdkey for Salina. Blows that one up and it's gonna be a loss of a yard on the play. Lost the yard, second and 11. Wapakoneta, they've won at least a share of the last six WBL titles. They've won it outright this year. This game does not have any implications for them as far as the league standings, but boy, does it set tone. You want to have a good taste in your mouth going into the playoffs. Moyer rolls to the right side. There's a flag down. He throws it deep, and that's going to fall incomplete. 
off of the hands of Caden Wirtz. But we do have a flag on the play, and it is going to be holding against Wapakoneta. That's our first flag of the game, and that's a good time to introduce our officiating crew. Our officials are Harold Hitchcock, Michael Holtzapple, David Tobias, Nate Santignan, Chris Beckstadt, and Gerald Eberly. That's gonna push the ball all the way back to the 29 yard line, and it will remain second down. Second and 20 from the 29. We see Walpock here once again, four wide yes. to the right of Caleb Moyer. Long second down. They go with the ball out to the flat, but the swarming defense by Salina. That pass was Walter completed to Ryan Walter, but a host of green shirts beat him right away. They well, pick up one yard on the game on the play. And this Bulldogs defense so far has been flying around the field. Got a holding penalty on the last play just because of how quick they got into the backfield. But we saw there the ball gets out to the sidelines quickly. And you had four Bulldogs there as he's catching the ball. So they're doing a really good job. You can tell they've been preparing all week for this matchup, really reading the play calling and getting there quickly. A lot of pep in the step of this Salina Bulldog defense. Caleb Moyer, empty backfield now as Mullen rotates out. And it gets knocked down by Dalton Chilko. Does a great job of getting a hand on the football there, and that's going to cause Wampak to have to punt it away. So this is our second punt of the game, both by Wampak Canetta. So the Salina defense stiffens up, does a real nice job, and that will bring number 99 into the game to kick it away, Worth Ethan Iser. To receive a punt. Had the ball marked incorrectly. To punt. Get it back to the 30-yard line. Now we'll go, Josiah. So as you said, this game could not start any better if you're a Salina Bulldog as they're going to get the ball back. Nice punt by Iser. Fair caught by Salina. And they're going to take over first and 10. Nice catch there by Kate Wirtz. And with 18 seconds remaining in our first quarter, Salina will have the ball on their own 33-yard line. Momentum clearly on Salina's side of the field right now. What you'd like to have here is a nice positive play and then go to the quarter break and talk about how you want to continue to attack on this drive. Bobby Morris, empty backfield, goes out to his right-hand man. That's John Lutz, and he picks up positive yardage. Looks to be about a gain of eight. And that's going to take us to the end of our first quarter. What a first quarter, Josiah. A lot of action. And at the conclusion of our first quarter, it is Salina 10, Wapak 7. You're watching WBL football on WOSN. We want to thank our quarter sponsor for tonight's game, Al's Woody's Diner. Al's Woody's Diner in Wapak is Wapak's best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. And our premier sponsor is B&B Auto Repair. B&B Auto Repair rely on Van and his team of expert technicians to, pro to provide excellent service. Call 419-738-8090 for your auto repair needs. Here we go, Josiah. Second down and three for Salina to start our second quarter. 
and the Wapak defense, they've got to stiffen up a little bit here because Salina has some momentum. Morris passes it to Lutz. That's the definition of stopping things in the backfield as Ryan Walter is Johnny on the spot to take down John Lutz for a loss. Yeah, we saw that right away. Ryan Walters read that play on the quick pitch. He was already in the backfield, kind of setting that edge for his team. And got a good stop there. Now it's third and five. As you said, an opportunity for this Redskins to get, get their offense back on the field. They need a big stop here. Bobby Morris, he can do it with his arm and with his legs. Trips to the bottom. John Lutz on his left hip. He's going to go out to him in the flat on the left side. He, Lutz fakes, jukes, and he's going to be right near the first down marker. Not a whole lot of exuberance by the Salina sideline, but they do get the first down, a favorable spot, and Salina converts. Yeah, the Bulldogs have found something with John Lutz. Those quick little passes out to him, you know, gaining six, seven, eight yards each time they do it, you know, for another one of our Lee's famous recipe chicken first downs. Yeah, Salina being very methodical. Of course, they had that long run by Morris for their touchdown. Full house backfield right now. Oh, and it was a full house, and they opened the door, and Wapak came in. Berkey, the ball carrier. I think that was Ryan Walters again, hitting that hole quickly. And we've seen that a couple times where Walpaw has blitzed two or three extra people to really throw off this Bulldogs offense here. And a good play there to get a big stop on first down. Now we have second and 13. Walpaw defense, once they saw that full house backfield, it looked like they had an automatic call per the scouting report to bring everybody. Morris goes back, it's a screen pass. There's Lutz again. He's able to avoid one tackle. Not the second though, a nice tackle by number 51, Wyatt Fuel. But positive yardage for Salina again to make it third and manageable. Yeah, they set up that screen well. We saw the quick rush by the Redskins and find that outlet to John Lutz there. And if it wasn't for Wyatt Buell, that would have been a, a huge gain for this Bulldogs offense. A nine yard gain for Salina on that screen pass. Wapak almost blew it up, but almost only counts, what are they saying? Tiddlywinks or something, but third and manageable, manageable for the Bulldogs. You ever play Tiddlywinks? Uh, nope, I have not. Outside. It looks Two like Wapak's gonna bring here <laughs> some blitz. Yes. Now got a lot of guys up there they sure in do. the box. You've got one on one down here at the bottom and Salina, oh, they're gonna take a timeout. And we would like to thank our timeout sponsor, Metzger Financial Services. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. 10 to 7 Salina. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Salina takes that time out on this third down uh, right at midfield. So if you're going to go with being two down territory, you've really got to pick up positive yardage here. And they didn't like what they saw from that Wapak defense either. Bobby Morris in shotgun. Lutz to his right. And Morris is going to keep it around the left side. He finds daylight. He picks up the first down, and he is knocked out of bounds by Grant Stauffer, but not before he picks up a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. First down, so it's going to be first down for Salina on the Wapak 38-yard line. Yeah, we saw Salina send a lot of motion to the right side. Bobby Morris held the ball, gave a positive Another first down for this Bulldogs offense. Just keeping this Walpock defense a little off, going back and forth, mixing it up here as they now a quick pass out to Lutz. And what a hit there 
by number zero, Jarrett Mullen, reading that ball right away and making the, the tackle in the backfield. Yeah, Mullen has been Johnny on the spot coming up there. Lutz and Mullen, the two running backs for the respective teams as well. I think I may have confused them a couple times in the first quarter. I apologize just because they are very similar, similar runners, and they have met each other on the field, and we saw it right there. Berkey on the left hip of Bobby Morris now on second down and 14. Dazzle, dazzle. And they get a screen set up out on the left side. Nice play by Salina as number five, Caden Wurtz, takes it down the left side. That ball was bouncing all over the place, Josiah, but it's good enough for a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw. Or, uh, free throw. <laughs> Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken for home style happens here. And the reverse pass. Able to get the ball out finally to Caden Wurntz and another first down. And we just talked about one of the keys for this Bulldogs is these sustained drives. And so far, this has been one of those good drives for the Bulldogs as they run it up the gut once again there. But just keeping this Walpock offense off of the field. It was a 15-yard gain for that first down. That's a three-yard gain right there for Salina. The tackle by number 85. And that is none other than Grant Hauser. Grant Hauser going to the University of Louisville as a tight end. Nice defense right there. Second and seven. Morris. Looks like that's intercepted. And it is. Lutz was the intended receiver. But it is kicked off by Ryan, Ryan Walter, Walter once again. You know, just making play after play. A little bit of that bend, don't break defense for this Walpock Redskins team. And what an interception that was. Diving right in front of the Bulldog receiver. Wasn't sure if he caught it there, but the official was standing right over top of him. And what a big play. A little bit of momentum now can shift back to this Redskins offense. Salina had the ball for a little over five minutes. It was a 10-play drive, but Ryan Walter with the interception, and Wapak's going to take over on their own 17-yard line with 7-11 to go here in quarter number two. Moyer looks to his left, and he finds his intended receiver, and he's going to pick up positive yardage. That's Caden Page. Caden Page, a really, really quick athlete out there, almost Caden breaks Hillary that one, picks up a least famous recipe first down. Yeah, this is the first time we've really called Caden Page's number tonight. Moyer doing a great job getting it out to him early, kind of taking the, the Bulldogs offense there, get it out to the, to the length quickly and pick up some big yards, and they did that on the last play. Mullen gets the ball from... Mo or from uh, Moyer, yes, and he goes up the middle. Mullen keeping the ball on the handoff. Now it's on the three stop, right two, there. Second and eight. Well, let's call it two. All on their own 32 yard line. Turnover, such a big part of the game of football. This Wapak um, passing game. Caleb Moyer has not thrown an interception this year. And he has thrown for 16 TDs. That's impressive. And he's going to throw it here. Finds his man down the middle. That's Caden Page. He's going to break it all the way. Yes. Touchdown, Wapa. 68-yard touchdown pass from his quarterback, Caleb Moyer. And that's touchdown number 17 on the season for Moyer. Moyer to Page. Yeah, as I just said, we haven't talked a whole lot about Caden Page. And two big catches on that possession. 
for another touchdown, a Pantry Pride touchdown. Pantry Pride means best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and best service you can count on. Pantry Pride. And there is the extra point by Victor Iser. And we know that Cross Roofing is our extra point sponsor. Family owned and operated for over 96 years. Join the Frost family. They are an equal opportunity employer. Call 419-739-ROOF. 5.53 remaining here in quarter number two. It's been a dandy. That drive was a little bit over a minute, a minute and 23 seconds. And it covered all of three plays after the turnover. Finished off by a 60-yard touchdown pass from Caleb Moyer to his receiver, Caden Page. Well, I like what they did there with motioning Jarrett Mullen out, kind of fake that quick pass that they've used tonight, and then finding Caden Page just in the middle of that zone defense. And once he caught it, he was off to the races, and nobody was able to catch him there, able to score. And we've had some Big runs and big plays today, tonight, you know, from both teams. We certainly have. It has been action packed. It's like the Fourth of July. We've got fireworks all Lateral over the place. Just trying to stay up with it. Our scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone. Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Ethan Iser tees it up. Draper and Berkey back deep. For the Bulldogs. I just did kick. Lutz. And. Oh, that goes off of. Number four for Salina, but he gets it in the end zone. That'll come out to the 20. That's Wes Graber. Could have been disastrous, be Josiah. But Salina's going to start this possession the deepest they have all night long on their own 20-yard line with 5.51 remaining in our second quarter. Yeah, and that was the best thing that could happen for the Bulldogs is it rolling into the end zone off that contact. Even if it went out of bounds, it probably would have been inside the five. So the ball is brought out now to the 20-yard line to start their offense. What an exciting game we have had, and we're not even to halftime yet. Bobby Moore's pushing John Lutz out to his left. Empty backfield. He looks to his left, and he finds his receiver. I believe that was number 15. I didn't quite pick up the number, but it's good enough for a first down. It's number five. And that's Caden Wirtz. Yeah, if you look, that was the exact same play. Walpolk just ran, scored the touchdown. They motioned out John Lutz and forced that defense to shift a little bit and find that gap within their zone in a good ball, good placement, great catch there. Another first down for the Bulldogs. 15-yard gain. That's a Lee's Famous Recipe chicken first down. Bobby Morris getting the call from the sideline. Lutz on his right hip. Morris is going to keep it from off the right side. He finds a hole. He's going to pick up positive Bobby yardage Morris on that ball. play before he is brought Stop down by, by uh, Brody Prezar. We'll call it a gain of nine. He's going to push the ball up to the 44-yard line. And that, it, well, it was a good change in call. You saw the uh, uh, Bobby Morris just waiting until that last second to get a call from the official. Looked like there might be some blitzing on the right side, so they decided to go the other opposite of the blitz and pick up a big eight yards. Second and short opens up the playbook for the Bulldogs right here. Let's see where they go with it. 4.20 left in your second quarter. They're going to hand it off. That's Berkey, and he comes around the right Berkey, side. First down, by Prather. Gets a first down, and that's going to move the ball close to midfield. Let's call it the 48-yard line. Ball spot on the 48-yard line. First down, Bulldogs. Hey, 
Salina, they'd love to just eat up the clock on this drive and put one in the end zone, not give Wapak a chance to get their offense back on the field, Josiah. Morris in the shotgun. Again, Berkey on his left hip. Bunch tight to the left. Morris fakes the handoff, goes to his left. Outstanding pursuit again by Brody Creaser. Bobby Morris caught by Creaser. And that's going to be a Bobby loss the on the play. Down. Pushes the ball back to the 46 yard line. A loss of two for the Bulldogs. Great, great pursuit by Creaser. Yeah, absolutely. Read that right away and was able to track down Bobby Morris from the backside there. But you could tell he just read it, found the gap, you know, able to tackle him. You know, big play here, you know, three minutes to go in the game. Second and 12. Don't want to turn the ball over here in this area. So trying to force this Bulldogs into some long downs. And they are second and 12 right now. Morris keeps it. Looks deep. One on one out there. A lot of contact. No flag on the play. The ball was intended for Caden Wirtz. Great defense by Noah Bishop. Makes it third and 12. Well, Bobby Morris went deeper on the route, but missed Lucas Gray, number 14. The tight end kind of snuck out of there. Nobody was around him within 10 or 15 yards. He was wide open, but you know, good defense there by the secondary of Walpock. Knocking the ball down, forcing a long third down. So Morris has got to make great decisions here if they do put it in the air. He throws at a 59% completion rate, 60 for 101, 10 touchdowns, four interceptions on the season. He is going to keep it and look to throw. Good protection. Goes to his left, and what a nice route run there by Caden Wirtz. And that's good enough for a famous, the least famous recipe first down. Yeah, like you said, a great route. Got to the markers, made a little juke move to the outside, and the timing was perfect by Bobby Morris finding his receiver there. As you said, Caden Wurntz, and a big first down now. 2.38 left to go here in the half. 16-yard game. This is the seventh play of the drive for the Bulldogs. Morris. Empty backfield again. Really good protection. He sees daylight. He runs to daylight. Then he slides. Picks up about seven on the play. Bobby Morris keeping the ball. 225 and counting. And Salina has one timeout left. Ball's going to be marked on the 34 yard line, 33 yard line of Wapa. Gain of five. And we'll see the offense have to start picking up a little bit, especially if they want to put it in the end zone. Only two minutes to go. Like you said, only one timeout. You don't want too much time. You know, it's a little bit of that clock management to where you want to make sure there's no time left, but you don't want to run out of time either. Morris, quarterback run the whole way. Comes around the right side. And there's a flag on the play, and he does get out of bounds. Gets up to about the 30-yard line. Let's see what the call is. Might have been holding out there on the edge. We do have holding on the Bulldogs. And if you're Wapak, you're going to take that penalty. You want to push them back. Them being the Bulldogs. It'll remain second down. So it was a downfield holding. That ball's only going to go back to the Wapak 36-yard line. So not as severe a penalty as first thought, Josiah. Yeah, it looked like it was number 58. They called it on Dalton Chilko. That's hard on those extension plays is to keep your hands inside, and his hands got a little bit out, and the officials called it. But not a huge penalty, like you said. Morris looks right, goes to his left. There's Wurtz again. Nice pursuit by Wapak's Grant Stauffer. That's going to make it third down. Gain of, let's call it two on the play. As that moves the ball inside the 35 down to the 34 yard line. On that clock keeps ticking here. Just about at a minute. Ninth play of the drive. 
Salina leads, or excuse me, Wapak leads 14 to 10. Salina would like to take the lead going into halftime. Morrison's quarterback run off the delay. He's going to get positive yardage, gets it up to the 30 yard line. And now there's a decision to be made by Salina. I think you're going to go for it. The wind is coming right from the north end zone. And we got a timeout by Salina. We'll take one as well. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Tonight's timeout sponsor is Metzger Financial Services. Helping you plan your financial future, call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Josiah, fourth and short. Salina takes a timeout to talk about it. Go for it or kick the field goal. Looks like they're going to line up and go for it. Yeah, as we can see, the wind's blowing into right their left. face. Yeah. yeah, right into their face. So. If you want to make that attempt, you want to see if we can get some more positive yardage, the first thing you got to do is you first got to get a first down. Fourth and two, big play in the first half of tonight's game. Morris looking to pass, looks off and then comes back. And that is incomplete. As Caden Wurns unable to come up with it. That ball, that ball was thrown short. And Wapak's going to take over on down. The coaching staff for the Bulldogs was hoping for the catch. The ball got bobbled about three times before it was caught, but official was right there. The ball hit the ground first. And so it will be Walpock's ball, 25 seconds to go. I figure they will be fairly conservative here. But again, 25 seconds, let's say we need to get a score. It's the fourth quarter and we gotta go. Why not try it here? Work on it. Caleb Moyer. Mullen, he hands it off to him around the left side. It's a little bit of a crease, but there's his counterpart for Salina, John Lutz. And we got ourselves a student council meeting right there, and everybody's going to vote to let the officials blow the whistle and we'll stop the play. Stopped by and Company. Close to a first down, and Wapak's going to take a timeout. They mark it right at the 40, so... It looks like it's going to be just short. Again, our timeout sponsors, Metzger Financial Services. Helping you plan your financial future, call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Our premier sponsor is BMB Auto Repair. Rely on Van and his team of expert technicians to provide excellent service. Call 419-738. 8090 for your auto repair needs. And we would like to thank our scoreboard sponsor tonight as well, Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. So, Josiah, they do give Wapak the first down now, and with 12 seconds remaining, they're on their own 40. Do you go with a trick play, Hail Mary, hook and ladder, or just give the ball to your outstanding running back and see what he can make of it. John, or excuse me, um, the outstanding running back for Wapak, Jarrett Mullen. Well, I think they have a couple options here with the officials putting two more seconds on the clock here. We'll see as they do decide to hand it off here and you know, it depends on how, what his gain is and about six yards, but they do call another timeout as the clock continued to run. So I imagine they'll put a few more seconds back on the clock there, but about a six yard run here. And we'll see what Walpock decides to do coming out of this timeout. Yeah, great effort there by Mullen and Brogan Langenkamp with the tackle. But yeah, you can't take these timeouts home with you, so you might as well use them. Pick up of six on the play. Wapak moves it to their own 46-yard line. And they do add three seconds back onto the clock, or at least officials are trying to get the clock reset here. So seven seconds to go. 
We want to thank our presenting sponsor, IC Signs. IC Signs in Wapakoneta, local, fast, and friendly. Check us out at icsigns.net. And the Side Rail is a presenting sponsor as well. The Side Rail in Wapakoneta featuring signature burgers, appetizers, large portions, and specialty drinks. Open seven days a week on Ogley Street and online at thesiderailrestaurant.com. So it looks like this might be the last play of our first half. Moyer with Mullen. Mullen goes in motion. Moyer's going to look downfield, and he's scrambling, and he throws it out of bounds. And that does end our first half, although the Wapak contingent is trying to say there's one second left on the clock. I don't think they're going to get it, Josiah. We're waiting for a final signal from the officials. And still haven't seen anything yeah. from the officials to say the quarter is over. Well, at any, any rate, our halftime sponsor is Al's Woody's Diner in Wapak. Wapak's the best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. It's halftime at Salina High School. Your score, Wapak 14, Salina 10. We'll be back to discuss the first half and the adjustments we think we'll see from both of these squads heading into the second half. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Salina High School, the home of the Bulldogs, where we have a good old good one, a Donnybrook here at halftime with Wapak Canetta leading Salina 14 to 10. I'm Dave Bowen, and doing color tonight is Josiah Stober. Our halftime sponsor is Al's Woody's Diner. Al's Woody's Diner in Wapak is Wapak's best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. This game has met up all of the exciting implications of a great WBL game. These two teams, their offenses are very similar. Their defenses are very similar. Wapak has won seven games by 21 points or more. Salina has won four games by 19 or more points. Salina has a four-game home winning streak. Wapak has a four-game away winning streak, Josiah. That first half, Wapak had five drives. They scored two D TDs, a... A Mullen run of 22 yards, a Jared Mullen run of 22 yards, and then a pass from Caleb Moyer to Caden Page for 68 yards. They've had two punts, and then they had one drive and at the end of the second quarter. What are some adjustments, some keys for Wapak going into the second half? Yeah, well, I'd like to see him get Caden Page a little more involved in this offense coming into the year. Um, has 70 catches, two more tonight, makes 72. Over 1,000 yards receiving on the night. Only he's been targeted twice, and he's caught both passes. So, you know, got to get your playmakers the ball, find ways to get him involved in the offense early, you know, and then establish that run game also. And for the Salina Bulldogs, you know, I think they've done a great job of winning that line of scrimmage, not setting up a lot of those long third downs. It's been very manageable, those third and two, third and three. So they got to continue to to keep that Walpock defense off balance between that those quick throws and then also pounding it right up the middle. So they've done a good job early to sustaining those drives and got to keep doing it here in the second half. Great thoughts as we move into the second half. Salina had four drives in the first half, a touchdown run of 59 yards by Bobby Morris, a field goal from Carson Smalley from 43 yards out. They had the one turnover via the interception, and then they turned one possession over on downs. Our premier sponsor is B&B Auto Repair. B&B Auto Repair rely on Van and his team of expert technicians to provide excellent service. Call 419-738-8090 for your auto repair needs. And one of our presenting sponsors is... Wapakoneta Ford. Wapakoneta Ford. View our new and pre-owned inventory at wapakonetaford.net or visit us at 613 North Dixie Highway in Wapakoneta. Here we go, Josiah. If the second half is anything like the first half, 
We got ourselves a dandy Bruin here in WBL action week 10. Both of these teams want to have a great taste in their mouth heading into the playoffs. Icer kicks it off, kicks it deep down to mm, the Salina uh, kick returner, John Lutz. And he's going to take that ball out to, it looks like approximately the 25 yard line. And we'll start our second half right there. Where are they going to mark it, Josiah? It looks like it's on the 27-yard line. First possession of the second half, Wapak and Salina both scored on their first possessions of the game. Let's see where we go here to begin the third quarter. Bobby Morris in the shotgun with Lutz to his left. Berkey in motion, and he gets the ball in the jet sweep. He's got daylight. Goes up the middle. He picks up a first down where Bryson... Pack takes him down, but a good play to start the third quarter for the Bulldogs. Yeah, we saw that in the first half, that same play running to John Lutz, but this time they bring in the other running back, Parker Berkey, get the ball to him early. Almost looked like he outran the snap, but Bobby Morris did a good job of handing the ball off to him. A good start to this second half for this offense. 13-yard gain for the men in green. Morris again with Lutz on his right hip for this first down play. He keeps it and comes out to his right and he finds his open receiver, almost breaks that tackle, does Cardson Weitzel, but he is tackled then by Ryan Richardson, but it is another first down for the Bulldogs. Yeah, another good play for this Bulldogs offense. Two plays, two first downs. And that is our Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down. So Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Gain of 11 on that pass completion. Hand off to Lutz, goes right up the middle. That offensive line creates a path for him. Three plays, three first downs. Salina, chunk yardage to begin the third quarter. Yeah, and you like to see your running back keeping those legs moving. As we saw there, John Lutz got some contact about three yards down the field, but he kept those legs churning. Got another Bulldogs first down. Got to give credit to the big uglies, saying affectionately. Up on the offensive line, Elson Billerman, Langenkamp, Chilco, and Curtis. Morris goes around the left side. Nice pursuit there by the Wapak defender, Grant Stauffer. Does a nice job. Morris is going to pick up positive yardage, but it's somewhat of a victory for Wapak. It's the first time Salina hasn't had a first down on a play from scrimmage in this early part of the third quarter. And Grant Stauffer was able to sniff out that play early, coming up from his free safety position to make that tackle. If he doesn't, Bobby Morris has another first down and some big yardage on that play, but a second and eight. On the 35-yard line of Wapakoneta, Salina trying to impose their will, coming out of halftime. Morris keeps it again, goes straight up the middle. Going to pick up another couple of yards. That was Braylon Walter on the stop for this Walpaw Canetta Redskins defense. The end there, able to crash down quickly, make the stop now, third and six. The Bulldogs break the huddle. Lutz to Morris's right. Lutz has it, goes around the left side. He's got the first down and more. Going around the left side, John Lutz. He's tackled by Brody Prezar, but it's another Salina Bulldog first down. They are on the 24-yard line, and that is a Lee's famous recipe first down as well. 
We saw that often in that first half. Running around that left side, we see the number of blockers out in front of him to get another first down, first and 10. Just outside the red zone. Berkey with the football. He goes up the middle. Tough sledding, but runs hard again. Prezar on the tackle, but he's going to pick up three on the game. Puts it at the 21-yard line. Call it the 21-22. Just got to be really impressed with Salina's first possession here. This drive, this is play number eight. Empty backfield for Morris. Look for a Bulldog to go in motion, but four to the bottom, one to the top. Morris unable to throw it and de decides to tuck it and run. Nice tackle there by Wyatt Buell. But Morris, positive yardage. Every play this drive has been positive yardage for these Bulldogs. They have it on the 20-yard line, and that is the red zone. Binkley Real Estate is our Red Zone sponsor. They have an effective sales approach, effective marketing campaigns, and extensive network that will give you results. Morris with Berkey beside him. Goes to the right, looking at the throwback. It's not there, heavy pursuit. And Morris does what a veteran quarterback does, does not allow a sack to occur. And the Salina Bulldogs will live for another day here on fourth down. But it does look like Morris is going off the field. They might be trying a field goal. Again, this is going to be number 22, Carson Smalley, the second best kicker in the WBL. Who's the best? Well, his counterpart, Ethan Isert, on the other sideline. But I'll tell you what, Smalley, he has 46 points in WBL action. Is it going to be 49? And it looks like it was wide left. Wide left. On the kick had the distance, just pushed it a little bit to the left. And, you know, good possession, but no points to show for it for the Bulldogs. Only positive is, is it puts Walpaw back far, farther to start their first possession here of the second half. A 37-yard field goal attempt. As you said, enough leg for Carson Smalley, but just to the left and goes into the pine trees. Beautiful setting here at Salina High School. Middle of the city, but it feels like it's got a country feel to it, Josiah. First and 10, Wapak on their own 20-yard line with 6.39 remaining in our third quarter their first drive of the second half. Moyer hands it off to Mullen. And nothing there as he is tackled by Corbin Lehman. Give him a gain of one. And again, this Salina Bulldog team, they are playing inspired again. With the win, they're going to be in the 6 to 10 range in the playoffs. With a loss, 10 to being out. They want to take any uh, hesitation or inability to make the playoffs out of the question. And this defense really stepping up here. Mullen with the carry, the tackle by number six, Corbin Lehman again. I'm a little surprised by this Walpock offense, really known for their passing. You know, even in the first half, quite a few runs trying to get the ball outside, using their athletic ability to, to attack those edges. But we'll see here now, third and ten, yeah, you know, yeah. pin back deep yes. if they're going to be a little bit more dangerous here. Yeah, conservative or aggressive, third and ten. The number six team in the state final poll. And Moyer, he's going to tuck it and run, try and get the first down with his feet. And he's not going to get there. Looks like he's shoved out around his own 28-yard line, which would make that a gain of seven. And I think if you're Wapak, you got to punt it away. And here does come the punt team. Decision by Coach Travis Moyer to turn the ball back over to the Bulldogs. Icert back to kick. 
Okay, the words back deep for the Bulldogs. Words deep for Salina. Great defensive stand by the Salina Bulldogs. Yeah, unable to get points on their first possession, but the defense was able to stand tall, force this punt here. Almost got to, but it's a good one. Yeah, gets it up in the air. Worst has room to run, but he calls the fair catch, and he'll take it on his own 38-yard line. And Salina, they've moved the ball effectively throughout the game, but they only have the one touchdown and field goal to show for it. They get the ball on their own 38-yard line with 5-10 to go in the third quarter, looking to have themselves a drive that comes up with points. Salina five and three. They're in a four-way tie for third in the WBL. Win obviously will keep them no lower than that third place level in the league. Morris fakes the handoff to Lutz, goes out to the left side. Nice catch there by Carson Weitzel. He's gonna pick up positive yardage. He does get enough for the first. I didn't think so initially, but with second effort, gets the ball to the 47 yard line, 48 yard line for a Salina first down. And that's a Lee's famous recipe chicken first down as well. Morris in the shotgun. Gives it to Lutz this time. He goes straight up the middle. And right now, Salina, they're just trying to impose their will with the running game and with steady effort with this offense, Josiah. Yeah, and they're doing a good job of getting these positive first downs, you know, five yards, making, you know, the distance much more manageable, you know, not putting themselves behind the chains and making it difficult and, you know, We've seen it, just even conservative play calling, getting out quick, not being those you know long balls down, just forcing Walpock to defend side to side. Morris keeps it. Salina has penetration, but Morris is able to get back to the line of scrimmage. He breaks the tackle, gets more than just the line of scrimmage. He's close to a first down. We'll see where they mark it. But great running, great effort by Bobby Morris. As we said, both of these quarterbacks, they can do it with their legs and with their arm. Bobby Morris right there using the feet to get positive yardage makes it third and short. Yeah, we saw Bobby Morris there break two tackles. Looked like he was going to get brought down in the backfield, but able to shake off those arm tackles and get some positive yardage. Now it's a very manageable third and one. John Lutz get the ball here. Will Morris fake it to him and run it on his own? He's going to keep it the whole way. Goes around the left side. He's got the first down and more. And pushed out of bounds by, I believe, number seven for Wapak. That's Noah Bishop, but not until it is another Salina first down. And they are definitely in Wapak territory. Getting to the red zone, they are on the Wapak 33-yard line. That's a gain of 10. Well, it's so difficult to defend when the quarterback's a great runner there, allowing your fullback to just lead the block, you know, almost outnumber the defenders, able to make that tackle. And we saw that another great run by Bobby Morris. Morris keeps it again, goes left side again. The pursuit is there this time. Wapox, Brody Preiser, and Grant Hauser. They aren't fooled by that particular play. No gain on the play. It'll be second and 10. Turnovers have been an issue for Salina at times this season. They have the one in this game. Wapak does not have a turnover. And they've played a clean football throughout the year. A second and 10, Morris with an empty backfield. Looks to his right, and there he finds his receiver across the middle, Caden Wirtz. A nice pickup there to make it third and manageable. 
And Bobby Morris reading that zone defense from Walpock, finding Caden Wernz in the gap there. And a good pickup there on second down to make it third and one. Yeah, more than just third and manageable, third and favorable, third and one for Salina. I don't think you get fancy here. I think you just play north-south football or south-to-north football in this case. Get that first down and move from there. Lutz does get the football, but there's a host of white shirts. He's close to the first down marker. We'll have to see where they mark it. I'm not sure he got it there. Just based on the feet of the far official, it looks like they're going to call it fourth and short. Fourth down and this is going to be one of the key plays not only of the second half, but of the entire football game. The Salina offense versus the Wapakoneta defense. And we've got ourselves a timeout. Salina's gonna take that timeout. We'll take one as well. You're watching High School Football on WSN. We'll be right back after these. Welcome back to Salina High School. Our timeout sponsor is Metzger Financial Services. And to be quite honest, it's not a timeout by Salina. It is a timeout for measurement, a timeout nonetheless. Our timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Josiah, fourth in inches. Salina is going to go for it. This is going to be a fun play to watch. Yeah. Imagine Bobby Morris to the left. That's Looks like he's got a, a barrage of blockers in or, front of him. Yep, you <laughs> called it. There he goes. He gets the first down, gets around the edge. And again, you got to compliment the left side of that Salina offense for not holding. Wapak defense, they anticipated that as well. That's an area where holding can happen very easily. We've seen it happen in the first half once. Great job by the interior lineman for Salina. We're going to have to go to a backup if we don't get somebody with 7, 6, 1, 3, 2, 8. So the ball is now on the Wapak 22-yard line. It's a gain of two and a new set of downs for the men in green, the Salina Bulldogs. Bobby Morris just doing a great job managing this game. In motion is Wurtz. Going to give it to Lutz on the counter. And he goes up the middle, and he does not want to go down. And he's close to another first down, and at any rate, that ball's going to be in the red zone, and our red zone sponsor is Beakley Real Estate. Beakley Real Estate has an effective sales approach, effective, effective marketing campaigns, and extensive network that will get you results that move you. That is good enough for a Lee's Famous Recipe first down, and that's going to put the ball on the 12-yard line. We see this offense just being methodical, moving the ball down the field, giving the ball another power run and about another five yards for the Bulldogs offense. Berkey with the carry, with the gain, and you're right. Woody Hayes, Earl Bruce, they'd be really, really proud of the way the Salina Bulldogs are pounding the football tonight as they move deeper into the Binkley Real Estate Red Zone. Ball down on the eight yard line. What do you think, go left again or is Morris gonna look to his right? He's gonna give it to Berkey. Berkey's gonna go behind the right guard. It's touchdown Salina. Our our touchdown sponsor, Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride means best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and best service you can count on. Now, what a play call there by Salina. You know, Parker Berkey, about every time he's come into the ball game, they've given him the ball, and two plays in a row there, able to hand off and found that gap, and like you said, got to give it to that offensive line, doing a great job creating holes. Carson Smalley gets the extra point. Frost Roofing, our family-owned and operated roofing company for over 96 years. Join the Frost family. They're an equal opportunity employer. And with 52 seconds remaining in our third quarter, 
It is now Salina 17, Wapak 14, and what a drive by the Bulldogs. That was a 11 play drive. It covered four minutes and 30 seconds. It started on the Salina 48, so it covered 52 yards, and it was finished by an eight yard run by Berkey for Salina. And Salina, as we said, now leads 17 to 14. Well, we talked about those keys of the game. You gotta have those sustained drives force this defense, you know, and it's a very good Walpock defense, but keep them on the field, not allow this potent offense to be there. And you saw in the third quarter here, it's been all Salina Bulldogs, you know, doing a great job now. Only 52 seconds left in the third quarter. You know, sometimes your best uh, defense is a really good offense. And so far, this Bulldogs offense has been, you know, putting it in the, in the best spot possible in their playmakers' hands. And you know what? They're up three. Smalley kicks it away. And that's a nice return. He finds the gap. That's number 20. It looks like he's going to go all the way. That is Ryan Richardson. Gets clear down to around the eight-yard line where he's forced down by Wurtz for Salina. But what an answer, Josiah, to that touchdown by Salina. Wapak, a great return. Yeah, you almost just saw the air come out of this stadium here. You know, just a great run there by number 20, Ryan Richardson. You know, just found that gap and then just took off, you know, pushing this down. And with 41 seconds to go, an opportunity here. Best field position of the night for this offense. We'll see if they can pound it in here. Not very far out. Unofficially, a 61-yard return for Richardson. Moyer keeps the football, goes to his right, and he's in the end zone. Caleb Moyer, a one-play drive for Wapak, and that is a touchdown, our touchdown sponsor, Pantry Pride, the best quality meats, best va value for your dollar, and best service you can count on. And Moyer scores from the Binkley Real Estate Red Zone right away, and Wapak, they're gonna take this lead back and look to push it to four with an icer extra point attempt. It's up, and it is is good. Our extra points are sponsored by Frost Roofing, the family owned and operated business for over 96 years. Call 419-739-ROOF. So talk about answering. Wapak does it right there, Josiah. Yeah, what a change in momentum. You know, we just talked about how Salina used so much time off the clock, you know, they put themselves in this position The the fans were getting into it. And then one play changed that with a great run there by Ryan Richardson and then a, a finish by Caleb Moyer. So Walpock, as you said, just is able to come right back, not put their heads down, come back, you know, and you can see why this team is 9-0 on the year. You know, doesn't let a whole lot of things challenge them and, and shake them, and they've done a good job here of responding. You're exactly right. The sign of a champion. How do you respond? 35 seconds remaining in our third quarter. Wapak's going to kick this one off, and we appreciate our quarter sponsor, Al's Woody's Diner. Al's Woody's Diner in Wapak is Wapak's best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. Ethan Iser. Just so much action and excitement here in Salina. The pundits said this was a two or three touchdown favorite for Wapak. I didn't see it that way. That's what it said on paper. But in reality, these Salina Bulldogs, they have stepped up and they are playing very, very tough as that one goes into the end zone. So it'll be first and 10 for the Bulldogs. An opportunity here for the Bulldogs to respond 
you know, can they continue to just stay true to what they've been doing all game? You know, running that power ball, a power up the up the gut, and then finding that space on the outside here. So we'll see what Salina can do coming off that little bit of momentum shift. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You're right, Josiah. Salina's offensive game plan has been exceptional this evening. They're going to get at least one play off before the end of the third quarter. Morris with Lutz to his left. Trips to the top. Fakes it to Lutz. Finds his receiver right there. That's number two, or is that three? I can't quite pick up. It's number three, and that is Carson, Carson Weitzel. Well, it's important to get a positive gain on that first play, and they do that here with Bobby Morris finding his teammate Carson Weitzel about a 12-yard gain or so. Yeah, 12-yard gain, another first down. Salina has seven first downs here in the second half in this third quarter. Going to try and get one play off before the end of the quarter, and they're not going to have that happen. That's the end of the third quarter. Your score, Salina 17, your guest, Wapong 21. You're watching WBL Football on WOSN. Our fourth quarter's underway, and it is a dandy. Wapak 21, Salina 17, Salina. Looking to continue this drive. Here we go, some trickery. Wurtz with the ball, he's gonna throw it long, and it goes out of bounds. That's the kind of play you're like, if he's wide open, throw it. If he's not, don't. And Wurtz threw it only where his receiver or it would sail out of bounds harmlessly would occur. And that's what happened. It goes out of bounds second and ten. Yeah, good decision there by Wurtz to see his receiver. There's no gap, no space for him to get open. So just decides to throw it out of bounds and uh, learn to live another day. And so we get the ball back. A long second down here, second and ten. You know, we've seen so much of this offense does productive first downs. We'll see what they can do out of having this long second and 10. We got four receivers to the bottom and only three defenders. Let's see if Salina can read that and take advantage of it. They pick up the coverage. Morris goes the other way to his right and he goes to his intended receiver out there, Grant Adams, but that's gonna fall incomplete. So now it's third and 10. Third down. It appeared like there were only three defenders, but once the ball was snapped, the Wapak secondary flowed to where all the receivers were. That's why Morris went the other direction. Unable to connect with its receiver, Adams. So now it's third and 10. Big play right now for the Bulldogs. Yeah, we haven't seen him this far back in a while here. So third and 10, and it's a quick. They go to the right, Lutz, he comes up with positive yardage, gets that close to his own 39 yard line. That's a seven yard gain. And now it's decision time with it being fourth and three. And it looks like Salina's gonna punt it away. I think that's the right call. Uh, it doesn't matter what I think. It's what <laughs> Coach Bader wants to do. And uh, he's gonna punt it away. But I agree with the decision. Yeah, lots of time here in this fourth quarter. Their defense has played so well tonight, forcing Walpock to punt on multiple occasions. So trying to play some field position here, and it's a really good punt. Mullen and Page back deep, and they let it roll. Is it going to get to the end zone? I don't believe it is. It dies right there at the one-yard line. What a punt by Bobby Morris. Wapak, the heart of a champion. If they are who they say they are, they could put a drive together right here to put it away. And we're going to take a break as things line up. We'll come right back. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. First and 10 on the one-yard line. 
for Caleb Moyer and his gang of Wapak Redskins. Moyer's gonna throw out of the end zone, looking deep, and he goes across the middle. He's got Page wide open. Page jukes and jives. He's got it down the left sideline. And from being deep in your own territory, Wapak shows the poise of a champion, and they get it out in out of their own deep end, and they're out near the 40-yard line. Yeah, most teams you would think would hand it off to try to get a little bit of space for your quarterback to move, but as you said, that veteran presence there, finding his go-to guy, Caden Page, on in the pass from the end zone, and now Walpock has an opportunity, first and 10 on their own 41. It's a 40-yard pass completion, Moyer to Page. Moyer's going to keep the ball, comes off to his right, no hold to the left, and he's going to pick up positive yardage and get the ball to midfield. Gets up a little slowly as he landed hard on his right shoulder, but that's a nine-yard gain. Second and one. Right at midfield is the ball. Wapak trying to get this game into a two possession contest up four with 10 minutes remaining in the contest. Moyer's gonna keep it, comes off the right side. Good interior blocking by that line. He picks up positive yardage. Gets deep into the secondary of Salina, where he is taken down by Wurtz and Brody Schulte Arnold. Schulte Arnold gets up slowly, but he's going to stay in the game. But that's a Wapak first down. So Wapak starting to impose their will. Salinas had the methodical drives. This drive for Wapak is shock and awe right now. Well, and they've switched the field position. If you remember that great punt there by Morris, pins them at the one yard line. Now they're all the way down at the Bulldogs 30. 19 yard gain by Moyer on that last run. He's gonna keep it again and go right up the middle. And Berkey meets him at the line of scrimmage. Might have picked up one on Berkey the play. Stopped by Berkey. Result of play second and eight. Well, a good tackle there by Burt Key as Walpock had three blockers in front of Caleb Moyer, and he just dove in the middle of them, able to knock down Moyer for a, a one-yard gain. Caleb Moyer holding his right wrist. It's going to take a lot to get him out of this game, but right now might be a play where you see Mullen get the football to give Moyer a chance to get that right wrist, get the feeling back in it. Let's see what they, what they go with here, Josiah. He's gonna keep it, look for a throw. Maybe it was just a fake. He's looking deep in the corner. He's got Page out there, but it's gonna fall incomplete. Caden Page, nice run running the route. Nice job running the route. Open, but the, the pass is not on the target and it falls incomplete. Well, and you have to wonder if that right wrist had something to do with that. You don't see that very often, him missing an open target. As you said earlier, 80% on the season. But it looked like he got a quick wrap on that right wrist. Maybe a little bit of blood there. Yeah. But another opportunity here. Third uh -huh. and long for Walpock. Yeah, Caleb came over to the sideline, and his dad, Travis Moyer, gave him the call, and he got a little wrap. And he's going to keep it, and nothing there. Nicely done. Sniffed out, led by number 56, Ian Mullins. And that's going to make it fourth and nine here on the 31-yard line. So I think you're going to see Wapak go for it here deep. Not totally deep. You're not inside the red zone, but deep enough that you can look to convert this fourth and nine. Yeah, I think it's too far for a field goal attempt right here. And you know, no use making a, a punt at this time. So, you know, you use your veteran experience with Caleb Moyer and the attacking weapons that he has. They go with the screen. screen. Nothing there, Salina all over it. And that's gonna be a turnover on downs for the Redskin. Redskins and Salina. They keep it a one score game. They're gonna take over with 7.50 to go on their own 30 yard line.
Just an outstanding game tonight, both teams. This is excellent WBL football, and it's up for grabs here with 7.50 to go. Bobby Morris takes the shotgun snap. He's going to run the football, and there's Wapak all over him. A host of white shirts, no gain on the play. Well, once again, it's been Ryan Walter in the mix there, making the stop. We've called his name a lot tonight. Able to read that quarterback run, gets a stop there, makes it a long second and nine for the Bulldogs. And again, both teams being very, I'm not going to say conservative, I'm going to use the word smart and intelligent with the football. You don't want to put it in a position where you turn it over for a pick six right now, but Salina, you're behind. You got to stay with your playbook. You got to find first downs here, and that's what they'll look to do here on second and long. Morris keeps it, goes to his right, and that one's tipped. It went off the hands of Carson Weitzel, but I'm not so sure it wasn't intended for Caden Wurntz. They both were on the same line for Bobby Morris, and it's almost like he threw it through Weitzel to try and get it to Wurntz. Salina, very fortunate, end of the story. Yeah, like you said, very fortunate. You know, that tip ball could have went anywhere. Luckily, it found some grass. You know, get another opportunity for them to go here. Once again, another long third down. That was third and nine. You know, got to get some positive yardage, especially if you're thinking 6.55 to go. You know, is this two down territory? Deep in your own territory at the 31. Bobby Morris. We've not seen either team throw a deep ball. Morris goes back. They're going to go with the screen. They've got lots. He's got room. Good blocking there. And he gets the ball up here, fumbles it. But Salina's on it right away, and the side judge is going to say that the ball was down, and Salina recovered it anyway. But what a nice screen pass right there as Wapak was penetrating hard. Salina executes it to pick up the first down. Yeah, we've seen that a couple of times, just that screen. You know, just so it's ran well, able to find Lutz there coming out, kind of got hidden in the offensive line, able to come out, find, the, find his quarterback, Get, it, get the catch and pick up a big first down. 13 yard gain on the pass completion. No need to look downfield when that screen pass, when executed to perfection, goes so nicely. Morris keeps the ball, he goes to his right, he finds daylight, gets into the secondary, and he get, takes the ball all the way down to the Wapak 40 yard line. A 16 yard scamper by Bobby Morris and Salina again. They are moving the ball. As you've said throughout the contest, Josiah Stover, Wapak, it's been a bend but don't break defensive philosophy. And this Bulldogs offensive line has done a really good job tonight making holes for, this, for their quarterback, for the running backs, you know, you always like, got to give credit to where credit's due, and this line has played really well tonight. Berkey on the left hip of Morris, and he's going to get the ball. He goes straight up the middle. Looks like taken away. There's a fumble right there. And Wapak gets it. They strip the ball away from Parker Berkey. What a big turnover right here. The first guy tackles, the next two or three, they went to strip it. Berkey, such a hard runner, hard to take down. But Wapak, they strip it from him, and the turnover gives the Redskins the ball back. And that was Brody Prezar. You know, you saw him, he made the first contact, but you could just see him ripping that ball away as Berkey was trying to fall down on it. And he just continued to rip and rip, and what a big turnover, number two on the night for this defense, and, and what a time for it to come. You're right, two turnovers now, both on Salina's side of the ledger. They've got to stiffen up defensively. Moyer with the football, and Salina does so right there. No gain on that play for Caleb Moyer. Matter of fact, I think he's going to lose one yard on the play, so they're going to have the ball on their own 30, well, no gain right there on their own 35-yard line. 
And this gets back to where, again, possession of the football is so important, Josiah. So you don't want to give it away by being reckless or more aggressive on offense. But if you get too conservative, you're going to give the ball back to the opponent via the punt. Moyer kicks it out to Mullen. The m and &M boys. Mullen goes left. Salinas there on the pursuit. Nicely done. And... Again, no gain, maybe a loss on the play. It is a loss this time. Let's call it a loss of two. Graver landing in a host of dogs on the stop. Result of a play third and 12. So it's going to be on the 33 yard line now. Second or third down and 12. This is another huge play in this football game up to this point. The crowd. Both sides on their feet. They see the importance of this down. Empty backfield for Caleb Moyer. Trips to the bottom. Looks to his right. Going to look to run. He scrambles out of pressure. Throws it deep. But it's short for Page. And it's fourth down. Not only is it incomplete, but that stops the clock with 347. Both teams have all of their timeouts left. Salina's going to get the ball back, Josiah Stober. Well, Jarrett Mullen's a little frustrated. He had leaked out of the backfield, was wide open on the backside, was you know, waving his arms back and forth, trying to get his quarterback's attention. But Caleb Moyer decides to go deep on there and really kind of a dangerous ball into coverage there. Luckily, it falls incomplete, but... Salina is going to have another opportunity here with 3.47 to go in the game. They got to get it in the end zone. I start to punt it away. Wurtz deep for Salina. I start comes towards our press box on Wapak's side of the field, and it goes out of bounds. Salina's going to have the ball on her own 30-yard line. You're watching high school football on WSN. We'll be back for what just might be the final drive for the Salina Bulldogs. Three forty to go in the ball game. Wapak twenty one, Salina seventeen. Salina with the ball in her own thirty one. Can they put a drive together here? Morris pitches it out to Lutz. He goes around the right side, gets a nice block, picks up positive yardage up to the thirty seven yard line, and it will be second and five from there. Make it to thirty six. And as we see, that clock is continuing to run here. 3.18 left in the game, so Salina is going to have to start picking it up here, getting the play calls in quickly, try to pick up some big yardage here on each possession. You do have the three timeouts, though, so that helps you out in that aspect. But they are eating up a lot of clock here. Morse looking to run to his right. We'll use the sideline to stop the clock. He doesn't get to the sideline, doesn't get to the first down marker either. The clock continues to run. Third down for Salina. The ball is going to be marked on the 39-yard line. That's a pickup of three. Make it second down or third down and two. Oh, the atmosphere. Fans yelling from both sides, cheering on their team. Morris, he hands it off to Lutz. He finds a hole, gets the first down and more. Going to push it up to the 45-yard line. Salina still on their side of the 50, but that's a six-yard gain, and it's a first down for the Bulldogs. Clock continues to run, 2.07. You got to think about putting the ball up in the air a little bit here, don't you? Yeah, two minutes to go here. Clock now winding down. Like you said, three timeouts still. So they have some options here. And a short ball there yeah. by Bobby Morris. Yeah, looking to find Wurtz over there on the right side. Falls harmlessly to the ground. Make it an incomplete pass. Stops the clock. 150 to go in our contest. 
Both of these teams, have we said, as we've said throughout the contest, have outstanding kickers. But right now, that doesn't come into play because Salinas down four. They've got to find pay dirt and get the ball into the end zone. Second and 10 from their own 45. Bobby Morris looks left, comes back to his right. And that one falls incomplete off the hands of Wurtz. So now it's third and 10. Caden Wurtz dove for that one, unable to come up with it. Definitely two down territory. You don't need to get all of it, but boy, do you want to get most of it to make fourth down manageable if you don't pick up the first, Josiah. Yeah, and that was a good route there by Caden Wurtz. You can see trying to get the ball out to the sidelines, maybe a catch of five or six yards and then get out of bounds, but a big play here is, as you said, don't have to get all of it, but they need to get a good chunk. And they hand it off to Berkey, and he is stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Fourth and 11, and if you're Salina, I think you got to take the timeout right here. They do. We'll take one as well. well. They'll talk it over for a pivotal fourth down play. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. It's fourth down and 11 as Berkey loses one yard on that play. Salina talking it over with Coach Brennan Bader. Six and three, five and three. Wapak nine and zero, oh, eight and zero. Oh. Your WBL champion, but Salina wants to put a blemish on that championship as they shared the championship last year. This is what appears to be the play of the game. Bobby Morris. Takes the shotgun snap, looks left, goes, he finds Wurtz, but he's gonna be what appears to be short of the first down. He's short of the first down. Wapak's gonna take over on downs with 128 to go. And it's gonna be tough for Salina to stop the clock here. It was a great executed play. Wurtz just was not able to get enough yak yards after completion to pick up the first turnover on downs, Josiah. And it looks like Walpock's gonna walk away with a hard fought victory. Yeah, well you saw Walpock put a little pressure there on Bobby Morris, making him throw a little bit earlier than he wanted to. Didn't allow his receivers to get far enough down the field and just one yard short. You know, Salinas still has two timeouts, but they got to get quick stops and call timeouts. It was an eight yard gain. Moyer, he's going to keep the ball. And the main thing is his ball security right here. And he is tackled by Jacob Schuler. And Salinas going to take a timeout. We'll take one as well. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. We'd like to thank our presenting sponsors for tonight. One of them is the Side Rail. The Side Rail in Wapakoneta featuring signature burgers, appetizers, large portions, and specialty drinks. Open seven days a week on Ogley Street and online at the Side Rail Restaurant. Dot com. And our presenting sponsors, also Wapakoneta Ford. View our new and pre-owned inventory at wapakonetaford.net or visit us at 613 North Dixie Highway in Wapakoneta. And you want to talk about being Ford tough, both of these running backs tonight, Jarrett Mullen and John Lutz, they have put on a show along with their quarterbacks, Caleb Moyer and Bobby Morris. And right there on cue, is Jarrett Mullen, and he is close to. He does get the first down, and that's going to do it. Wapakoneta, they're going to walk away with a hard-fought W tonight. Yeah, all they needed was that first down, and now Salina will not be able to stop the clock here as we're nearing one minute to go, and we'll see if they go in the victory formation here. One minute left on the clock. Yeah, Salina does have the one timeout, but Coach Bader is not going to use it at this point in time. 
And you are correct. The greatest formation for a winning team at the end of the game, victory formation. Caleb Moyer takes the snap, goes down on one knee. And I'm not sure if he'll have to do that one more time. I believe the officials are coming in and tell him, telling him maybe one more. But, oh. but what a game tonight. And what a game. And it looks like our play clocks, they don't function here at Salina this evening. And so we don't know for sure. But the players from both teams are greeting each other. What was a outstanding standing example of high school football and Western Buckeye League football, Salina. They gave it all they had tonight, Josiah, but Wapakoneta, they are going to be your undefeated Western Buckeye League champions at 9-0 and undefeated overall at 10-0. Thoughts about the game as a whole? Yeah, well, you know, congratulations to Walpock, you know, an undefeated season. What a great accomplishment that is. And uh, But you got to give it to, to this Bulldogs team as they came in. They, uh, you know, followed exactly what they planned for all week. You can tell they executed what their coaches put out there. You know, gave them a, put them in a spot to win tonight. But you just got to look at the response that Walpock had. It looked like the momentum had shifted after Salina had taken the lead. But then here comes Walpock with that big, kickoff return and a one play score you know and that's what champions do they respond and Walpock did that tonight great battle we love to see these games congratulations and good luck in playoffs good luck in the playoffs is exactly right Walpock definitely in probably going to host two games now Salina they're going to have to wait and see but it wasn't due to a lack of effort they finished the season six and four Five and four in league action. And again, just another outstanding contest tonight in the Western Buckeye League. That's going to do it from Salina High School. For Josiah Stober, I'm Dave Bowen. I'd like to thank our camera folks tonight. Zach Keith, no related to Toby. And Abby Beck, outstanding at the camera at midfield. One more time. Wapakoneta. Your Western Buckeye League champions, 21, Salina, 17. Again, for Josiah Stober, I'm Dave Bowen. And until next time, may all of your Hail Marys reach their intended receiver for pay dirt. Good night, everybody. <laughs>